a very haunted evening to all of you. Welcome to the beginning of night two of this year's annual Halloween. I believe we're on our sixth one this year. Six years of spooky, haunted games. We're starting off strong tonight with a game that I have heard so much about, Anatomy. Then we're going to be moving on to the Silent Hill light gun arcade game, followed by an old school Hexen style uh, shooter in a medieval. And we'll finish off tonight with Carrion. Uh, for now, let's see if we can. Oh, we're actually just right in there. You have kind of an old school VHS aesthetic to this. And it is dark as hell. Shit's locked. Classic horror. Shit's eternally locked. That would be a very odd anatomy of a hand coming up from the dirt. The relative silence of this. Oh. Hello, Necronomicon? The relative silence of this is already kind of making me uneasy. In the psychology of the modern civilized human being, it is difficult to overstate the significance of the house. Since as early as the Neolithic era, humankind has defined itself by its buildings. Buildings for worship, buildings for socializing, buildings for protection, even buildings for the commemoration of the dead. But of all the structures that mankind has invented for itself, there is little doubt that the house is that which it relies upon most completely for its continued survival. So this is an actual haunted house not just i don't know it does it, it doesn't sound like this is just going to be a house that has a haunting in it but that the house itself might be malevolent that said there was a tape in the kitchen right or was that just referring to the one we had already picked up okay Oh, hell oh! The physics kind of freaked out, which in turn freaked me out. Oh, okay. I thought... Whoa, holy shit! When you run, you run! You haul every ass. The house is one of the key elements that separates modern humanity from its more primitive antecedents. No other creature goes to such lengths to create lasting, permanent shelter for itself, nor regards such shelters with such reverence and import. Why do human beings of our modern age foster this tremendous sympathy toward their homes? There are many reasons, of course, but perhaps it is due in some small part to seeing them as a reflection of ourselves. There's a tape in the downstairs bathroom. Okay. Where might that be? I don't know what is causing the static. If this is something I need to be worried about, or if it's just normal and regular. The anatomy of the house is such that this analogy is less superficial than at first it may seem. To carry it further, if we were to dissect a house as we might a human cadaver, we would find ourselves able to isolate and describe its various appendages and their functions in a decidedly anatomical fashion. There is even a fair number of direct comparisons to be drawn between those organs of a house and those of a human body. I don't like that at all there's a tape in the garage also i think i heard a door click oh god all the anatomy posters take on a completely different context 
this is also reminding me of House of Leaves a little bit. This very dry, clinical, academic analysis of something that is quite clearly not right. Uh-huh. The threshold here. Foo, woof. Uh hum. Every threshold, because you cannot see to the other side of the door, is like horrifying. It's stepping into another world. Um. Oh, wait, is this the. the yeah, this is the other side of the kitchen. Voom! Oh my god, it's- I can't actually run in here, it'll disorient me too much. I have to look down a little bit, just to get my bearings, because if I look straight ahead, nothing, and I have to hug the wall. Okay, we're back at the front door. Which means- oh, okay, this is the garage. That makes sense. Anatomically sensible. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Can I crouch? Oh, no. Okay. And the fact that you have to look down because you can't see what's right in front of you is also its own special kind of frightening. Wait, I just walked past, didn't I? Oh, God. Wait, no, that's bathroom. <laughs> uh. For example, let us examine the living room. Often the dominant space for the house is ground level, as well as typically the center of activity in a well-populated home. The living room is very much the heart of the house. While a human heart circulates blood to oxygenate the body's extremities, the living room circulates people, activity, communication. It is the room most likely to be found beating, as active and vivacious as its name would imply. The comparison is only strengthened when we consider also that the living room is most commonly the room to contain the fireplace, making it additionally a locus of actual physical heat. There's a tape in the living room. Okay, I, I don't like that living room to heart comparison at all. Also, thank you for the sub, Mortis. 30 months, that is amazing. Holy hell. Also, thank you for the bits, Arth. Also, and, uh, hi, Sarah. I don't recommend trying to fall asleep to this game. Because <laughs> it sounds like... Some shit's gonna go off. Was this the living room? I think it was. And it's so barren. That might be the freakiest part of it. Is that it's just a desolate house. Oh, and if we're going with this metaphor is uh, of the home as anatomy, as an anatomical being, it being barren and empty? Ooh. It is easy to think of the kitchen and dining room as the stomach or digestive system of a house, though this comparison is tenuous. By contrast, the function and analog of a bathroom should be immediately obvious. The hallways and corridors of a house are its veins, providing circulation coursing throughout its frame. A staircase bears more than a passing resemblance, both physically and symbolically, to a spine. The windows of a house serve much the same purpose as eyes, and anyone who has ever rounded a bend or a long drive and come suddenly face to face with a tall, dark manor will tell you that it is difficult to shake the impression that the house, through its lightless windows, is a creature capable of vision and intelligence. I really, really, really don't like the idea of this house being alive, or even once being alive. So 
that said on the stairs. Ah, uh, there it is. Can I just jump off? What's the fall damage like? <laughs> oh. The bedroom is perhaps the room that most eludes direct comparison in this fashion. At a stretch, and allowing for a bit of poetic sympathy, it might be said that the bedroom is not unlike the human mind, or those parts of it which dictate thought and imagination. In the bedroom, dreams are dreamt, passions are ignited, epiphanies are experienced in cold sweat at early hours. In the bedroom is where people invariably spend the majority of their time, though comparatively little of it whilst conscious. Huh. Oh my god. That's really good. And a great allegory for the mind and how we spend so much time inside of our own heads. Wow. Good lord. Don't like that. Oh. The physics and, like, the clipping keep freaking me out a little bit. Um. At some point, I feel like I'm gonna have to run. And that's not gonna be a good time for me. Given that description and that comparison of the bedroom to the mind, this is an especially chilling room to just be desolate. Okay, time to run the hall. Uh, okay, I am on the stairs. Jeez. <laughs> And yet, this analogy is an incomplete one, for obviously the mind is an exceedingly complex thing. If the bedroom represents the thinking, dreaming part of the brain, then it is the basement that represents those lower, unconscious parts. The basement is dark. It is buried. It is a place full of cobwebs where memories are stored. A poignant comparison, truly. Often the unnerving uncertainty that comes with considering the deeper aspects of the human psyche is not unlike gazing down at the swimming blackness pooled at the bottom of a basement stairwell. It is a place we spend our childhoods filling with monsters that will lay for years in patient silence. It is a place that, barring some specific errand, we seldom ever want to go. There is a tape in the basement. That minimalist message manages to be really ominous in this context. Also, I have to appreciate the writing here and the voice acting. I think both are really strong. Like, this is such a no-frills game, but what is here is powerful. Uh, this was just the garage. Actually, uh, was there... No, there shouldn't be a door down to the basement in here. This was the bathroom. And this was the kitchen, one side of the kitchen. So wait, where is the basement entrance? Just have to follow the walls around until I come to it. This is the living room, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I can just get up on the sofa. Just fuck someone's couch right up. Okay. So we've gone and looped. Just a lit. Huh. I feel like that should be the basement. Maybe it is in the garage. Maybe. 
unless I need a key, which would be very different from anything we've done so far. But hey, I think we've gone all the way around now. Nonstop Atomic says, God, the way shapes just loom out of the darkness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it has to be through there. Unless... Unless it's in the... I would take this as the kitchen, but... Hmm. Ah, here we go. Fuck! It's even darker down here! I hear something. It's so faint. Oh, I was holding my breath. I... I was... certain something was gonna happen. Of course, this comparison, though appropriate, is a very heavy-handed one. And often the basement is little more than a storage space, littered with the corpses of spiders and wood lice. While poets and psychoanalysts no doubt dread the thought of a dark basement, in truth, it is the bedroom, the waking mind, that place of dreams, it is actually the most frightening of all. There is a tape in the master bedroom. Just the plain statement. I think it, one of the things that's making that hit a little bit stronger is it's reminding me uh, of something from the Magnus Archives. Uh, in a very specific season one statement, there is a wasp's nest in my attic. And the repetition of that as a motif. Mm. This must be the master bedroom. And it's all this really aggressive shade of red. Oh, I can jump. Hmm. There is a wasp's nest in my attic. Oh, ugh, ooh. I don't know that I want to play this here. This seems unsafe. It is here, in the bedroom that we are at our most vulnerable. Each night we shut our senses to the world for hours at a time, trusting in the house to keep us safe until next we wake. In this state of extreme vulnerability, we will spend something like 20% of our lives. Anything might stand beside us, watch us, keep us company until dawn, and we would never perceive it. We can only pray that the house will not let such things carry on as we sleep. In this way, during these hours, the bedroom seems less like a mind and more like a mouse. For it is here that the house is most likely to betray us. Oh. It is here that we place ourselves most at the house's mercy and spend each night hoping that it will not bite down. Oh! Uh. Huh? Okay, the game shut down. I, I'm i pretty sure that's part of the game, but... Uh, Y'all are seeing the Made with Unity stuff, right? Otherwise, I need to go back and uh, fix the, the capture. Okay, I need to go fix it real quick. Okay, should be back up now. Was that part of it? 
Yes, it was. Oh, God. The thing is, I saw, um, I think Absinthe said it in chat, but regardless, because I don't want to look down just yet. Regardless of whether or not there is a release of tension or a greater threat at play or any kind of jump scare or monster inbound, this is doing a great job building atmosphere and building a sense of dread through pure psychological horror and through metaphor, which I adore already. It takes a very strong uh, right. It, it takes a very strong script and and a sense of design to pull something like this off, and it's succeeding wonderfully. It takes a good story. In the psychology of the modern civilized human being, it is difficult to overstate the significance of the house. Since as early as the monastic era, humankind has defined the era of the In all the structures that mankind has invented for itself, there is little doubt that the house is that which it relies upon most completely for its continued survival. It... There is a tape in the dining room. Okay. Oh yeah, this is the kitchen. It said dining room before, I'm pretty sure. But I just, my brain interpreted that as, as kitchen, I guess. Okay. Oh! <laughs> Trapped in a prison of my own design. <laughs> Uh, the tape we heard just now, by the way, is uh, was a garbled version of the first tape. Why do human beings of our modern age foster this tremendous sympathy, 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 sympathy? There's a tape in the downstairs bathroom. Same order as before so far. But horrendously distorted. Oh, I'm going- wait, no, I'm not. These are really good distortion effects, too. Doors are unlocked. Don't like that. Somebody said something about a cabinet? What, in the bathroom? Um... Good catch. So now where to? I guess since all the doors are unlocked now... Might be worth checking out. This was the master bedroom. There were like two other doors that were locked up here. Jesus Christ. Okay. Maybe it was only that bathroom door. Yeah. This is the other bedroom. What other doors did we find locked? Oh, the one by the front door. Oh, cool. Yeah, I definitely hear that sound in the background growing just a little bit louder. Still very faint, but it's like this rhythmic kind of swirling sound. Like, 
swooshing. Kind of like if you hold a seashell up to your ear. a tape in the living room. I don't like that that's suddenly not garbled. It's all solar <laughs> saying Dave succumbs to the spiral ASMR. <laughs> and Wingless interpreted that as an Uzumaki reference, which fair game. Okay, so this one was living room. But also, what about uh, this door? This is just a really fucked up spooky closet, huh? And now I have come out of it. I'm happy to say that uh even though a few months ago were one of the worst time it was one of the worst times of my life, uh I did finally come out to my family uh during that period and God, it's so so freeing, but the lead-up to it was terrifying. The living room's through here. That is flickering, too. Yeah, my way, closet door. I have places to be and, and spooks to be had. It is easy to think of the kitchen and dining room as the stomach or digestive system of the house, as its components are tenuous. By contrast, the function and analyze of a bathroom should be immediately obvious. The highways and corridors of the house are in veins, providing circulation coursing throughout its frame. A staircase bears more than a passing resemblance, both physically and symbolically, to a spine. The window of the house serves much the same purpose as the eyes, and anyone who has ever rounded a bend or a long drive and come suddenly face to face with a pair's dark manner will tell you that the house is a creature capable of. What the? Oh god! At the end, that got. <laughs> really unsettling. Okay, was there no message that time? Okay, first thing I'm going to do in that case is check. Oh, wait, it should be the basement, right? Or the garage? Fuck. <laughs> uh, the first thing I want to do is check if anything popped up in the closet. Hmm. Yeah, somebody said try turning the TV on. Nah, I, I hate that. Does at least give off some light for when I come back in here. Wow, wow, I hate that. Do certain rooms make things more distorted than others? It's a very good question. Okay, try the car hole. No, nothing. Zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom. Till we hit a wall. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's the basement then, right? Which was connected to the kitchen. Shit, I really don't want to cook. Oh, no. They're like, no. You cannot. That is illegal. If I really wanted to be mean, I would break more plates just out of the blue and freak people out.
Yeah, I think it's the first bedroom if it's not the basement. And I think the master bedroom was the last one. But I might as well check anyway. Holy shit. Did it get darker? Uh That one's just floating in midair. I can barely find my way back to the stairs. Am I on them? No. I have no I I am still in the room. Oh! 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 Huh. Huh. The bedroom is perhaps the room that most eludes direct comparison in this fashion. At a stretch and allowing for a bit of poetic sympathy, it might be said that the bedroom is not unlike the human mind, or those parts of it which dictate thought and imagination. In the bedroom, do, 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 do. I dream that there are teeth growing all over me, everywhere on me and in me, like cysts or bone spurs. They're loose, but I can't remove them because I have no hands. I look out through the bedroom window and I see a truck approaching. A what? A man steps out, approaches, and enters through the front door. His body is covered in swollen ticks the size of quarters. He's walking through the downstairs hallway and laughing. He begins urinating on the wall. He spits on the carpet. He's moving through the first floor, breaking and upsetting things. He goes to the basement and stands at the top of the stairs. I'm angry at him, so I slam the door and he falls down. I can feel his bones snapping. The ticks are bursting, oozing all black blood everywhere. I can feel them being ground up, dissolved and torn, splitting and shredding. I leave the door closed. I close my eyes and try to sleep. The teeth continue growing on me until there is nothing left of me but teeth and gums and sinew. The basement is dark. Oh, we're ending on the basement. I didn't... Oh, no! I hate that! I heard that door! I didn't make out all of what that tape said, but what I could make out, I really didn't like. Who sold this house? Helen Richardson? Oh! oh! Okay. Okay. The game has closed again. Uh, hitting play. Should be seeing Made with Unity. Uh, I'm going to tab out and back in just in case to make sure. Things are only getting more distorted. What a strong image to open on. Because I'm pretty sure this is a like some kind of bay window or something, but it looks like bars. There we go. Oh god. We're back in the master bedroom, I think. 
Jesus Christ. Strong spiral energy. Oh my god, I thought that was someone. What the hell? Ah. That's screaming. It's just a loop. I'm gonna assume that's just a loop of a scream. I can kind of hear it. Oh, God. Um. Oh! Shit, wasn't expecting to hear it there. Wait, this is just a wall of solid dark. Oh, it's a window. <laughs> to the window, to the wall. Till I scream off all my balls. Look at the doorknob. The stocky door. Oh. I dread to think what will happen when I turn this cursed TV on. Somehow not the worst thing that could have happened. This is really beautiful, though, in a kind of macabre way. Oh, that's a strong image, too. Damn, this game can do a lot with a little. I kind of get why there's been so much praise for it now. Wait, the TV said something? I couldn't make out what was on the screen. Was there something more to it? Hold on, I'll go back. Oh yeah, you can kind of. Um... Something never come, never came back. Can't make out what that is before never. Someone is saying that says you never came back? I don't see you. Oh wait, maybe Yule. Yeah, I can kind of see that. You will never come back. But that looks like came. That's definitely came back. Anyway. 
How about you, spooky closet? Anything? No? Interesting. Very thought provoking. Should be bathroom. Lovely. Good stuff. There's a lot that I can just barely not make out, and I don't like it. We're going upstairs again. Maybe not. Maybe not in there. Maybe I... Oh. This is just empty now. Oh, yeah, we've been here. Oh, yeah, the screaming tape. Great. Love the screaming tape. It's my favorite tape. The eternally screaming, uh, screaming tape. 10 out of 10. Recommend highly. Okay, I'm at a little bit of a loss as to where to go. Oh wait, the garage. I didn't check the garage. Wait, no. Isn't this? That's the door to the garage. And that's locked. Was there another way into the garage? Oh. Um. No way, this door was always there. Never mind. That it freaked me out for a second. Nothing in impossible closet. Gonna double check in here. And okay. We're good. Do another quick loop in here just to make sure. If not, then it's Oh, the, it's getting more and more barren as we go on. Okay, so it's gotta be upstairs then. Oh wait, wasn't there one that was on the stairs itself? themselves okay back to the master bedroom Is it in Screaming Tape Room? Everybody's favorite room? I sure hope not. That room sucks. Zero out of ten. Ten out of ten. Nope, not in Screaming Tape Room. Nor is it... Oh. Okay. Ah, oh. Shit. I jump scared myself by running so fast.
I kind of miss Blockbuster. And just rental places in general. Not for renting movies, um, but for renting games. I would find so many little gems, and to be fair, a lot of terrible garbage. Just digging through the shelves. Plus, it was so much more cost-effective uh, for a low-income family to just go and rent a bunch of bullshit for a few nights than risk spending $60 on something that might or might not be good. I forgot to check the door in the kitchen to see if the basement opened up. Wonder if streaming tape room is still active. Or extremely minimalist bathroom. Nope, still screaming. Love it. It's a feature, an amenity, that comes with the house. It was one of the selling points, actually. It's like that Aqua Teen episode where Carl se uh, sells his house that's bleeding from all the faucets to, uh, to Danzig. We squeeze through. Here we go. blood drip? No. Yeah, they're just corralling me towards the basement, which we have not been down inside since the first loop. And considering how things have degraded since then, this does not seem like the most pleasant place to be right now. flickering texture bugs. Ugh. When you only have the faintest of lights in front of you, and one of these just comes juddering out into impossible space at impossible angles. Woo! Woo! <laughs> That's, uh, some shit. Huh. God. it. Wait, no. Is it out in the middle of the basement? Away from the safety of my precious walls? Fuck. Why? Or it's an event that's gonna trigger when I go back upstairs. Oh, God! There's an important distinction that must be drawn between the words deception and vivisection. That would appear to be lost on you. Your purpose was to listen, and yet at every turn you have pride, you have prodded, and you have interfered. Have you not been paying attention? Did it not occur to you that as an organism existing within a greater organism, your intrusion would be felt? And still you harassed. And now, like the wayward spider who witlessly settles upon a sleeper's tongue, you will be swallowed. Because the truth is this. When a house is both hungry and awake, every room becomes a mouth. Every room becomes a mouth. Also, the, the distinction between dissection and vivisection. Yeah, that is, you never came back. Holy hell!
just going to stick as close to the walls as I can. Is the tape degradation getting worse? Something. A board? Huh? Oh, it's just a column of black. I can go through those. I'm supposed to be doing here, if anything. <laughs> Just maybe waiting for the house to eat me. <laughs> I think I'm pretty close to completing a loop around the outside. Barlow says, after mouth comes stomach. Nope, don't like it. really orient my- oh, what the hell? Orient myself. Okay. Oh, God. Let's go. Let's go. Do all of these lines converge somewhere? Oh, hey. Is that a trap door? Or a basement door or something? Oh, goodbye, game. Glad I finally found that. That was starting to hurt my ears. Oh, that's not going to do my tinnitus any good. Don't have control yet. Oh! to a house when it is left alone, when it becomes worn and aged, when its paint peeled and its foundations begin to sink, when it goes for too long and lived in, what does it think of? What does it dream? How does it regard those creatures who built it? Buy it into existence only to abandon it, when its usefulness no longer satisfies them. It may grow lonesome. It may stare for long hours into the darkness of its own empty halls and see shadows. And its light may jump as it thinks, here, here is someone again, I'm not alone. And each time it is wrong. And the heart starts over. It may find itself, inventing ghosts to walk its floor, making friends with its shadow puppets, 
was the thing whispering to itself at the end of some quiet cul-de-sac. It may grow angry. Its basement may fill with churning acid like an empty stomach, and its gorge may rise as it asks itself through clenched teeth, what did I do wrong? Oh, wow. It may grow bitter. It may grow hungry. So hungry and so bitter that its scruples dissolve and its doors unlock themselves. While a house may hunger, it cannot starve. And so, in fever and anger and loneliness, it may simply lie in wait. Doors open. Shades drop. Hallways empty. Hungry. Bravo. Oh my god. So the previous occupant of the house died, and the house was left abandoned for years. This game does such a phenomenal job of making the place where we live and spend most of our time, most of our lives in, feel potentially dangerous, if not outwardly malevolent. And then there's just so much to unpack here. Oh god, this was wonderful! And I don't have control, so I'm not sure if something else is going to happen. I now see why people sp <laughs> speak so highly of anatomy. This game, by the way, is... Uh, like three dollars? You can get it on itch.io. It's three or four dollars. And worth every penny. As you've just seen. Um, unless somebody chimes in to say that there's more that I can do. I think I'm going to close it and then open it one more time and just see what happens from there. Yeah, Mint Carousel is correct. The house is in so much pain. It has abandonment issues. It grew bitter through neglect. and became this force of malevolence. Kept its doors open, just trying to invite someone in as it stewed in its own self-loathing. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, man. I really want to just sit and have a think about this a little bit more and unpack it but I mean you can draw a direct line from the house to a given person and the trauma one might experience whoops that's the uh, begins in splash by the way thank you again to Hobo Vampire for all the beautiful splash screens